Customers have huge investments in large bodies of existing applications that they can't walk away from. And just about the only hope for these applications is through virtualization, which allows you to kind of encapsulate these applications, jack them up, put them in a black box, slide new functionality in underneath them, and actually eventually start sliding the applications themselves around. So we've been doing a lot of work in this world of existing applications, allowing customers and companies to become more cloud-like in their internal operations and to, uh, actually allow them to start extending their data centers outside of their own physical premises into infrastructure uh, that they can rent from external service providers. And this is all well and good. It's very important work to be doing. But the question really becomes, what about new applications? And it's clear that there are going to be many clouds out there. Customers are going to build their clouds internally. Service providers are going to build clouds. Very large companies like Google are going to build clouds. And wouldn't it be great if we could have a way of writing applications that on the one hand can take full advantage of a particular cloud but also be portable across clouds? If you think of these infrastructure level clouds as kind of the new hardware, what is the new operating system for the cloud? What is that layer of abstraction that's going to allow us to write applications that can look great on a variety of clouds? And it's our premise, as is Google's, that the new operating system is these extended frameworks. <laughs> And uh, as you well know, developers over the last several years have by and large voted with their feet and traditionally they now work within frameworks that give them much higher levels of productivity. And uh, that's the reason last year we at VMware uh, acquired what we think is one of the best of breed new generation frameworks, the Spring Framework. Uh, this comes from work that was started uh, uh, 2002 by Rod Johnson and others who founded Spring, uh, who had been working in the Java world and had come to the conclusion it was just too hard to write Java and EJB applications. And uh, they evolved the Spring framework, which is oriented around a very simple, lightweight, but extremely powerful uh, object model. With the result in this is that more than half of the lines of new Java code being written today are written in the context of the Spring framework. They started that uh, effort based on open source, and they have continued in the open and open source tradition, and we're committed to continuing that. And uh, so late last year, we started in-depth conversations with Google and said, wouldn't it be able to great to give the world's largest body of developers, the Java community, a way of writing really efficient, great cloud-based applications. And as a result, we have been working with Google to bring to bear what we know about writing the back end of great, high-performance, portable applications with what Google has developed around the front end. A perfect marriage is to bring these two technologies together and give the industry an open, an open source layer to cloak the clouds, to allow you to get the fullest benefit from your investments. The one thing I've learned over the years is the more choice you give developers, the more promise you give to developers that they're going to be able to get a return on their investment by having the widest possible number of places that they can deploy this technology, the greater the motivation, the greater the applications that result. So we have had our two teams working together to really integrate the Spring Framework and the Google Web Toolkit. And now I'll give a complete answer as to how to write an end-to-end -end application, the back end and the front end, in a way that you can deliver really great, exciting apps that work across clouds, across devices, with a deep commitment to doing this in an open and open source fashion.